Welcome to Kellis Coder. Today we have a double episode. I will show you my CICD Azure pipelines to automatically build the code that I create for these lessons on a Azure Pipelines build agent that I installed on this Pi together with the Kick Assembler, Java and LFTP. And after it's built, it's automatically uploaded to my Ultimate 2 cartridge so I can just DMA it from there and also run it on real code. And then I will show you a little program. It is basically the hello world of C64. That's why I didn't start with it. I didn't want to be the same. Where we go and flash the border and background colors, we're going to actually translate from basic. So let's jump in. Motherfucker! So here you see one of these pipeline runs. We check out my code from my repository that is a GitHub. Then we assemble the code automatically. So we have different directories, lesson one, lesson two, and it will look for the main.sm file in there, build it and create a program file that bears the name of the lesson. So lesson one PRG from the directory. Then I create an artifact. An artifact is basically uh, a package that you can download in the deploy stage that has only the PRG file. So if I go to my run, you will see I have an artifact named C64 with the two lessons in there. And <laughs> look at that, 39 bytes, 25, <laughs> 25 bytes. <laughs> to show you the build stage. So that is the artifact. And then we go to the deploy stage. Uh, we don't need to check the code out because we don't need to build anything, but we do need to download the artifact. So we download the artifact C64 that you just saw. And I run a bash script using LFTP. And I will go into the details in a bit but basically uploads uh, everything that is in the C64 directory. That is what we just downloaded, the artifact, to the USB dev, and then use the input star.prg and quit. And this is the IP address of my uh, ultimate two cartridge. And then, well, the post checkout. So that is the whole process. Now I installed a build agent on my Raspberry Pi, as you just saw, and my Raspberry Pi basically just runs my uh, weather station code. This one, this is a React app that I wrote, and in the background it uses MQTT with some uh, C++ to gather this information. So I have plenty of resources left on this to install the build agent. So what I did is install Azure build agent Linux. I just followed this documentation from Microsoft, uh, how to set up the pet token. You need to set up a pet token in your environment with the proper uh, rights. Then I created a pool with my uh, agent in there. Basically just ran through this, started the the installation and started the agent. And then if I go to dev dot Azure to my company and I click on project settings, you will see I have an agent pool with Pi4 that ran all these jobs, some jobs filled for the test. So this Agent then needs to have installed applications and I describe them here in my code base. Uh, I can go here and edit my azure.yaml file. So this is my uh, repository. When you download this, this is an open source repository, link in the description. You actually get this file so you can customize it for your environment. 
and I documented what we need to install. We installed the agent, just talked you through how I did that. Then on the agent, that is basically your Pi 4 or whatever build agent you want to use, you need to install Kick Assembler. So you download kickassembler.zip, unzip it, and you put it in user local bin. That's where I stored mine, and that's where the reference in the code is to. Java, of course, because we need to run the Kick Assembler jar file. And LFTP. Now, usually I use this FTP task, FTP upload. You can just fill this in and it would actually insert it somewhere where your code is if you fill it in and you do add. The problem, however, was that this uses a, a function call or command that the ultimate 2 doesn't recognize. I get a 502 command uh, not found. So I just decided let's install LFTP and use that with very basic FTP commands to uh, local CD into the directory where my artifact is that we just saw that we created. Then to the USB zero, that is the stick that you have inserted in it. That's what she said. And then to the directory dev, because well, this is DevOps. And there I put all the PRG files that are created. But first we need to build them. So I first check out my uh, repository, and that is this repository, hence self. I clean it because I do not want any still information on there. And then I uh, run this build script. I first do set-e because I run commands several times. If a command fails, I want the whole script to eventually fail with an error and not continue because the last build, for example, succeeds. And when something fails, that pipeline stops. So here I extract, uh, or here I first create my artifact directory, because that is uh, non-existent. It's not a part of my repository, shouldn't be, because your artifacts are built. Then I loop through all the directories. So basically when we look at the code, you will see that I have uh, my directory C64. That's what I loop for uh, through. And then lesson uh, 01, lesson 02, and lesson 03, etc. It will look for the main.asm file and actually build that. So that is the entry point and it will eventually create a directory here called build, and it will hold lesson01.prg. That is what this does. We run kick assembler. We say find in the directories lesson and main.asm should exist. So if you have the current directory, C64, for example, it will not build anything, or a directory underneath it that doesn't have uh, a main.asm, that way your builds won't fill if you have different directories. I set the output directory to that lesson and the build and the output file. I set to that directory again. This is a uh, pipeline variable where your source has been checked out, or that is the slash s. This is the lesson then, build, and then lesson o1.build.prg, lesson o2.build.prg, or whatever that directory is called. Then that prg file, I will copy to a, a staging directory to create the artifact. So I will copy uh, lesson o1.build, lesson o1.prg to that c64 directory in the root of my workspace which we just created up here. And that is where we get the artifacts from. So we have built everything and this goes wickedly fast, like two lessons in less than 18 seconds on a pie. <laughs> That's ridiculous. So here I say, uh, publish an artifact with all the, uh, in this case, PRG files that are in the C64 directory. And it is a pipeline artifact. I only want it localized in this pipeline. So it will be stored on my Pi for three days. That's how I configured it. 
And the cool thing is that if that stage has run, I can always run this stage again to newly push them to my uh, pipeline. Uh, and we already talked through this. Here we download the artifacts and here we upload them. So that is the whole pipeline code. Now let's run this and show you how you can run this. Uh, for example, we can click on this pipeline. So if you go to pipelines, I created a new pipeline using this uh, file, this Azure Pipelines YAML file, and I can click run new. And let me open a telnet to my to my ultimate two oh, telnet. That's one word. So this is basically the same as when you click on the button and you see it on the console. So this is where we will upload this. We go to the dev directory, and I will delete these lessons that were uploaded. So, yes, let's see if I can uh, put them both on the screen, something like so. And let's run this pipeline. You will see it will start the CI CD part. And there they are. Ploop, ploop. They just popped up. So completely hands off. Now we can actually move to the Commodore 64, start the Commodore, push the button, go to USB 02, enter, then the dev, that's where we uploaded them. And there they are. I could have done this also via the telnet. Then DMA that loads them directly into memory, avoids the loading of serial. This is the clear screen from yesterday. Now let's load the next lesson. DMA that, run, and this is what we're going to be doing now. Let's jump in, it's a short one. We have a basic program here, and let's type this in. Tenpog53280, and 53280, that's of course the border color, every basic program knows that. And 53281 is the background color, which conveniently translates in hexadecimal to DO20 and DO21. And we peak, so we're reading from that address 53280, the value, and we subtracting one, and we do the same for the background color, 5. One. And minus one. And 30, we go to 30, we go to 10. And you get this uh, pulsing thing. Now let's code this in assembly. Let's be very literal and then we optimize it. So first we need to peak the value of 53280 or D20. And let, let's just use these so that you can understand that these are exactly the same values. So let's first do the peak. Yesterday we saw that we can use load and we can also load from memory address. So let's load from 53280, that value, yes. And then we say we subtract ROM from this. And this is a new command. SBC means subtract with carry. And again, we can use a memory address. So use that value to subtract from it or the immediate. So hashtag or pound sign one, because that's what we're doing here. And then we have the new color in a, and then we need to store that in that address. And that is what we did yesterday. Store, well, let's use BR color again. So we now decremented the border color by one. And let's do the same for the background color. We can just copy and paste this. <coughs> yeah, 
background color background color and then we have that go to and we ended on this yesterday with the jump and we're going to jump to 10 well we can just jump to main that's the same save this run this and you will see it's a hell of a lot quicker these bars are so much smaller than these bars so these bars are easily like 10 times as long as these bars so it's about 10 times as fast assembly is but we can even make this faster because we can do this in a single assembly instruction by using the decrement and then the address and here the decrement and the address so basically what it says go to address 53280 and the value that currently is in there subtract one from it and go to 53281 the value that is currently in there subtract one from that and jump and repeat so we can actually be shorter in code than in assembly than in basic this does exactly the same thing and you will see that these bars now are a bit shorter as well because there is less instructions so optimization does pay in the C64 coding. But it's not necessarily the thing that you first need to focus on. If you can actually uh, translate your code from basic into assembly, which is relatively easy as you can see, you already get a 10 time performance increase and then you can shave away any stuff that makes it even faster. So there you have it, translating code from basic, peek and poke, and the CICD pipeline that allows you to automatically build and push it onto your ultimate two cartridge or your uh, ultimate C64 mainboard. And there are other cartridges that have uh, FTP functionality as well. This is the Chameleon card, but I have the first version that has no Ethernet adapter, and I think the newest version actually has, but they're impossible to find. And that CICD stuff is what I do in my current project. I'm a CICD expert, implementation expert. We help a bank to move a legacy application into the cloud and we make it completely cloud ready. And the whole development is then done using CICD. So you don't need passwords, you don't need manual intervention. You are absolutely guaranteed that what you've done on dev, because you cannot change it on acceptance of production, not allowed to get into those systems, will done uh, automatically. And that's basically what we simulated here. And this was my first day, second day of holiday, and I get this itch, and I just needed to do that. And I figured this was something that you guys may like as well. This is, after all, an engineering channel. So I hope you learned something, and see you in the next one.